Now, we've been talking for quite some time about faith and the principles of faith. Now, quite often people get off in the faith area and they get into trouble because they don't understand the principle. So many times people only have the formula. Now, if you're one of those people that have just got a hold of the formula, then this is especially for you because we're talking about principles of faith. Now, the Word of God is filled with the basic principles of God's Word, and I'll tell you, it'll work for the people that put it to work. We've been talking about the God kind of faith, whosoever shall say. Now, I want you to realize that in Mark 11, 23 and 24, when Jesus said, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, he's not just giving you a formula. There's a principle involved in this, and if you miss the principle, the formula is not going to work for you. I want you to realize that what Jesus said here goes further than just saying. See, we've dealt with this quite at some length, but still yet there's some things there that you need to get a hold of. We're talking about the principle of the God kind of faith. Whosoever shall say, believe, doubt not in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have. Didn't say that he had it then. It says he shall have it. Too many people don't realize that there's power in their words. I want you to realize that there's power in your words. The importance of words, I really don't believe it can be stressed too much. In fact, I think most of the body of Christ has never taken time to sit down and meditate what God said in his word to realize that words that we speak, well, absolutely, they're going to put you over in life or they're going to defeat you in life. You see, Christianity is called the Great Confession. But the problem with most people is that they have confessed and believed and confessed the wrong things. Well, thank God if you learn how to confess God's Word, get God's Word in your mouth, begin to speak the things you desire, speak the things that God says in His Word belong to you, then you can change some things in your life. Now, I'll relate a story to you, this one specifically, because, you see, Many people are in this very same situation. I remember I held a meeting in a certain area, and a pastor and his wife, on Sunday night meeting, I taught on the importance of words. Well, after the service that night, we were out just sitting around having a cup of coffee, and uh, the pastor's wife said, Now, uh, Brother Caps, you opened something to me tonight, some understanding about the principle of faith and the authority of words that's really helped me. She said, We bought a piece of property, and we, you know, paying payments on it, but we decided that, well, we don't really need to make the payments on that, so what we're going to do, we'll put it up for sale and just get rid of it. Well, it had been up for sale for two years, and he said we haven't had a, actually a call on the piece of property. But she said, I found out something tonight from what you said and the teaching out of the Word of God. I found that our words are part of the problem because she said every time we go buy that piece of property, I say to my husband, you know, no one will ever buy that mud hole. <laughs> now, you see, it was in a little ravine, and they were going to allow people to dump brick and rock and things that they didn't need in there and fill it up. Well, they never did get that done. The property was still in a low area, and she said to her husband, you know, we'll never sell that mud hole. Nobody will ever buy that piece of property. Well, for two whole years, see, that prophecy had come to pass. Now, you may not realize this, but some of you have been prophesying the very things that's been happening. Now, listen to what Jesus said. Let's apply it here, related to what the Bible said. Whosoever shall say, shall believe, and doubt not in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith, shall come to pass, he shall have. Whatsoever he saith. Well, now, you see, they were applying that. They were applying the principle of the God kind of faith, but the problem was they were applying it in reverse. Now, some of you are doing that very same thing. You're applying the principle, but you're applying it in reverse. You're speaking the things you don't desire. You're believing the things you don't want to happen will come to pass, and you're speaking it, you're saying it's getting in your mouth. And when it gets in your mouth, it gets in your heart. When it gets in your heart, it gets back in your mouth. The more you speak it, the more you believe it. The more you believe it, the more you will speak it, because what you believe you're going to talk about. 
Well, she said to me, Brother Camps, I see that now, and we're going to change that. And I mean, she just looked right across the table to her husband and said, in the name of Jesus, honey, that piece of property will sell. That piece of property, somebody will buy that piece of property. Well, now, you see, that was on Sunday night. And I'll be the first to tell you, don't expect it always to work this quick. But it seems like when people began to apply the principles of God's Word correctly, God would just do some things to get them in that area of understanding in that area. So that was on Wednesday that she said that. She said, we're going to drive by that piece of property tomorrow, and we're going to say that over that piece of property, this piece of property will sell. This piece of property, someone wants this piece of property. Now listen to it. I want us to go back and listen to what Jesus said. Whosoever shall say, shall believe, and doubt not in his heart. Now I want you to realize that he said, doubt not in his heart. So she's telling her husband, we're going to go by there and say that, because Jesus said, whosoever shall say to the mountain. Now you see, it wasn't a mountain they had. In fact, it was exact reverse. It was a hole they had instead of a mountain. No, they weren't trying to move the mountain. They're trying to move the mud hole, as she said, the, the low ravine, the piece of property that she couldn't sell. See, for two whole years now, they've tried to sell it, but they couldn't sell it. You know why they couldn't sell it? Well, now, there's a law working here, and the law was working against them instead of for them. You see, the principle was working all the time, but they were just simply saying the wrong thing. They were saying the things they did not desire to come to pass. Now, you see, if you go on to Mark 11:24, it says, Therefore, this faith principle will work when you pray it. Therefore, what things soever ye desire, when you pray. When? When are you going to believe? When you pray, believe. Now, what are we going to believe when we pray? Believe you receive them. What them is he talking about? Them things you prayed. I realize that that's not good English, but you see, if you'll bring that same word right back up in that sentence, it'll help you to understand some of your problem. So they were applying the principle of the God kind of faith, but they were applying it in reverse. They were saying the thing they didn't desire. See, he said, therefore, what things soever you desire. Now, I'm confident, I didn't ask her, but I'm confident if I had asked her, how have you been praying about this situation? I imagine they had been praying the problem, praying that, oh, Lord, that we'll never sell this piece of property. We don't need to make the payments. What are we going to do about this piece of property? Well, now, you see, some of you are catching some things right here now. Some of you are getting some light on something that you said just a few weeks ago. Some of you just a few days ago, you said some things, didn't catch it, and now the Spirit of God's revealing it to you. Now, if you'll change that and begin to say what you desire to come to pass, begin to put the principles of the God kind of faith to work the way Jesus said to do it. Now, you see, this is what this family had done, actually, as the husband and the wife, see. They had applied it, but they had not applied it in the way that Jesus said to apply it. Because, you see, they had just simply said, well, now, we'll never be able to sell that piece of property. Well, now, as long as they believe that and they are saying that, that's exactly what's going to come to pass. Well, now, someone said, I don't understand why that works that way. Well, it works that way because it's a law of God. See, we're not talking about something that, you know, is a fad, something that you get on to, and sometimes I think people think, well, now, you know, that's just a fad. It's going to blow over one of these days. Those charismatics are all hung up on the God kind of faith in Mark 11, 23 and Mark 11, 24. Well, thank God we're not hung up on it. We're just practicing it. You see, we're practicing what we believe. We're practicing the Word of God. And when you begin to do that, it'll affect your life, you see. Well, now, these individuals, two individuals, their husband and wife, were in agreement. Now, you see, Jesus said in his word, in fact, we've read it, Matthew, the 18th chapter, I believe it was, said, if two of you shall agree. Now, he said, if two of you shall agree on earth. Now, I want you to notice something. It's on earth where the agreement takes place. (laughs) No, it's not going to happen when you get to heaven. It's going to happen here on earth. Now, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, they shall ask, it shall be done by my Father which is in heaven. 
All right? Now, here's two people. They've come into agreement. They've come into agreement that we'll never be able to sell that mud hole. I'll tell you, nobody would ever buy that thing. It's too low. Every time it rains, it floods, and nobody will ever buy that mud hole. Now, you see, they're practicing the God kind of faith, but they're doing it in reverse. This is a prevalent problem over the United States, well, over the world today. People are activating the law of faith, but they're doing it in reverse. Now, that's why we need to begin to meditate the Word of God and sit down and take these scriptures apart. No, it's not going to work for you just because you believe it's in the Bible. See, now, this is a full gospel minister, good man of God, godly man, teaching the Word of God. But yet, see, in this certain area, he had a lack of understanding of the importance of his words. And he's allowing his words to hold him in bondage. Now, some of you are in the same situation. Some of you are saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, tongue-talking, Bible-toting, full gospel. I mean, you'd almost fight somebody over the Bible. Yes, bless God, I'm full gospel. Yeah, I'm full gospel. I believe the Bible. Somebody said, well, do you believe all the Bible? Oh, yes, believe it from cover to cover. But then there'd be some areas in your life that you just kind of read over and just didn't give much attention to, see? And therefore, when you begin to, to speak things that you don't desire, when you begin to say things, you know, just out of disgust, sometimes you get disgusted and just say some things that you really don't believe. You say some things that you really don't want to come to pass. In fact, I think this is what the Bible calls hardness of heart. Your heart gets hardened to an area, and you think, well, <laughs> nothing's ever going to change that, and you just come out with some old negative statement, well, I'll tell you, nothing's ever going to come good out of that, you know, and just put curses on it. Now, I want you to realize, folks, that the words of your mouth will put curses on objects. It'll put curses on your finances. It'll put curses on your business affairs. It'll put curses on your physical body. As far as you're concerned, in an area, it'll affect your life. Because the very things that you are saying with your mouth will come to pass if you begin to believe and doubt not in your heart. I mean, even though you say some things that actually you thought, oh, well, I really didn't mean that. I just kind of said that because I was just a little bit bent out of shape over things. But now, wait a minute. The foundation principle of God's law is at work. Now, God's not going to just say, oh, well, now, wait a minute. He's had a bad day, so we're going to turn the law of faith off, and it won't work for him today. No. You see, this law is going to be working. Whether you're working it positively or negatively, this thing is going to be working in your life. Some of you have been saying some things that absolutely has caused you to be defeated. Now, the Bible says that he shall have. No, I didn't say had it then. said he shall have it. Eventually, he's going to have whatever he saith. All right? Now, what's he saying? He's saying that we'll never sell the property. We'll never be able to get our money out of that thing. What are we going to do? Well, you realize that he's speaking what he believes, evidently, because that's coming out of his mouth. Now, Jesus said, if two shall agree on earth as touching anything they ask. So here's a pastor and his wife. They've come into agreement, not on what they desire to do, but they've come into agreement on what they don't desire to come to pass. Now, quite often people do this, and I want you to realize that Satan is a master at causing these things to come to pass. He gets you in a certain area and gets you to thinking on the negative. As long as he can get you to dwelling on the negative part, he'll get your mouth turned in that direction. And when he gets your mouth turned in that direction, he's going to turn your whole body in that direction. You'll change courses 180 degrees if you don't get your mouth straightened out because the principle of the law of faith will begin to work. All right? Now, these two people, man and wife, came into agreement that night, on Sunday night, sitting around that coffee table, and here's what they said. We'll go talk to that piece of property. We'll go speak and say, be sold, you will sell in the name of Jesus. Well, they did that the next day. Now, that was on Sunday night. On Wednesday, someone called and bought the piece of property. 
Now, that's three days. Then three days, someone bought the piece of property, and besides that, they built a church on it. Some church bought it and built a church on it. Well, now, you see, for two whole years, they'd been desiring to sell that piece of property. Now, on the other hand, I want to take the other side of this because, you see, we need some balance in this thing. Quite often, people don't realize that the faith message, it's true, it's absolutely true that a man will have whatsoever he saith if he believe and doubt not in his heart. But now the problem is, quite often, people don't say it long enough to begin to believe it. Now, evidently, this couple had because, see, they'd been saying it for two years. They'd begin to believe it, and it was coming to pass. But now, if you just begin to say some things and say, well, now, there's the principle of the God kind of faith, and it'll work, I know it'll work, because, you see, Jesus said it would, and therefore I'm just going to say that I've got a new car, I've got a new house, or whatever, and it's just going to automatically come to pass. No, you see, that's not what Jesus is talking about in this passage of Scripture. He's talking about applying this principle, being a doer of the Word of God, not just trying it. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, I've said this before, but I want to say it again. I'll be the first to tell you, if you're going to try the Word of God, it's not going to work for you. No, it won't work just because you try it. In fact, a trier most likely will never be a doer of the Word of God. I want you to know this. Now, let me explain that just a little because some of you, you know, you didn't catch what I said. A trier will most likely never be a doer of the Word of God. Now, James said in James chapter 1, Be ye doers of the Word and not hearers only. Now, the reason a trier will most likely never become a doer of the Word of God is because that someone that says, I'm going to try that, they're going to try it until it looks like it's not coming to pass. Then they're going to throw up their hands and think, no, I guess that didn't work. I guess it worked for some people, but it won't work for me. <laughs> no, it won't work for you. It'll only work for doers of the Word of God. Now, if you'd start out trying to say some things, I can tell you, and I don't have to do it by any great revelation, I can just do it by knowing what God's Word says, I can tell you what's going to happen. When you begin to say, well, I'm going to try it and see what happens, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Things are going to get worse. Now, why would things get worse? Because Satan is going to come to steal the Word of God. Now, see, quite often this is part of the faith message that sometimes we've left out because we said, well, you know, in seminars we don't have time to deal with every aspect, so you have to leave something out. But we don't need to leave this out. And I want you to realize that Satan will come to steal the Word of God immediately. In fact, that's what Jesus said. I, I, we're going to get into that and show you in the Word of God where Jesus said that. He said Satan will come immediately to steal the Word of God out of your heart. Now, you see, Satan doesn't care at all how much you go to church. He could care less how much you read the Bible as long as you don't act on the Word of God, as long as you don't get God's Word in your heart. He could care less. But when the Word of God gets in your heart, then Satan gets disturbed. And his instantaneous reaction to that is to cause things to look like they're not going to come to pass, cause it to look like the very opposite comes to pass. In fact, this is one of the questions that's asked me most often, I suppose. Brother Caps, why is it that when I began to say some things in faith that it seemed to just the very opposite came to pass nearly the next day? And I don't understand it. Well, you see, the Word of God tells us about that. In fact, I want us to turn to that. Turn to Mark, the fourth chapter. Let's take a look at that. See, here's some things that the Bible tells us. Jesus tells us it'll work. Now, if Jesus says it'll work, thank God it'll work. You can just mark it down. It'll work if Jesus says it'll work, and here's the way he says it works. Mark, the fourth chapter, we find that Jesus is telling the parable of the sower. Now, there's four types of saw in that parable. And when he starts explaining the parable, verse 14, Jesus said, The sower soweth the word. Now, what word is he talking about? Well, he's talking about the word of God. 
Jesus said the sower that he's talking about in this parable is sowing the Word of God. Now, you sow the Word of God by speaking and saying what God said. In the 17th chapter of Luke, the apostles came to Jesus and said, Lord, increase our faith. And Jesus turned and said to him, If you had faith as a mustard seed, you would say unto this mountain, or should say, or would say, or could say, however you want to say it. I believe the Greek says you would say to this mountain, Be thou, uh, or this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. All right, Jesus didn't say a thing about giving them more faith. What Jesus did say was two great secrets. One, that faith is as a seed, and the way you plant that seed is to begin to say some things. See, get God's Word in your mouth. Now, if you get God's Word in your mouth and begin to say some things, you're planting seeds of faith. Take God's Word, what God said about you. If God says you ought to be prosperous, then thank God begin to speak in line with the prosperity that is in God's Word. If God says you ought to be healed, then thank God begin to speak in line with what God says in His Word about your healing. See, let that be coming out of your mouth. Don't dare begin to say what seems to be or what it looks like, because, if, quite frankly, your body may not feel healed. Quite frankly, your finances may look like they're in bad shape. But go to the Word of God and see what God said. Don't be dealing with the physical circumstance or just what it seems to be. You deal with what God's Word says and begin to get that in your mouth. Because when you do, folks, it changes your whole outlook on life. You begin to dwell on the good part. All right, now Jesus is there. He said to explain the parable of the sower. He said, The sower soweth the Word. And verse 15 says, These are they by the wayside, where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. So some of you have been wondering why it is that it gets worse when you begin to make faith statements. That's Satan trying to steal the word of God. Yes, I said he's trying to. No, you don't have to let him. You don't have to allow Satan to steal the word of God, because God's word is absolute authority, and you can hold fast to the word of God, hold fast to your confession of faith without wavering, and Satan can't steal that word of God. He must not be able to. Because Jesus said to Martha, Martha, you're cumbered about many things, but said, Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. She said under the ministry of Jesus, hearing the word of God, Jesus said, she has chosen the good part that shall not be taken away. Well, now, if Satan comes immediately to steal the word, why couldn't he take away that good part that Mary heard? Because she took time to meditate the word of God. She heard the Word of God, and she understood the Word of God. Now, this is where people get in trouble. When you hear this faith message and don't understand it, then Satan can come and steal the Word of God. You realize that when you understand God's Word and begin to operate in the principle and not just the formula, you are doing some things that all of God's power and all of His Word backs up. You're not just operating on some theory, folks. You're operating on the authority of the Word of God. All right, now notice, he said, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in the heart. Well, that's the design of Satan, to steal the word out of you before you find out it'll work, because when you find out that it'll work, then thank God Satan's had it, and you're going to walk in victory. But until you get an understanding of it, Satan is liable to steal the Word of God from you. Well, you don't need to let Satan steal from you, because God's Word is designed to put you over in life. All right, we're talking about the principle, not just the formula. See, the formula is that you say it, you speak it. That's the way you plant the Word of God. But the principle is that you believe and you doubt not in your heart, but you believe those things which you say are coming to pass and you are beginning to have what you're saying. I mean, eventually it'll come to pass. I like to say it that way because people understand it a little better. Eventually it will come to pass if you hold fast to the Word of God. 
no, don't let Satan steal the Word of God, begin to say and believe and speak what God says. Don't allow Satan to steal the Word of God. God's Word will work for you if you will work it. Because when you get God's Word to working in your life, then Satan's not going to be able to steal it at all. So I want us to back up and read in the fourth chapter of Mark again. I want us to start reading with verse 14. And it says, The sower soweth the Word. Well, that's the Word of God he's talking about. And he says, And these are they by the wayside where the Word was sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the Word that was sown in their hearts. That's his job. Satan is out to steal God's Word from you before you can get it to work in your life. Well, I want you to know that a lot of people have been allowing Satan to do that. As I said, it is one of the most prevalent questions that people ask me. Why is it it gets worse? When I begin to speak and to say some things, you see that the Word of God said about me that my God meets my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Why is it that it seems to get worse? Well, Jesus tells you why. Now, I don't want us to stop with the why. I want us to go on and find out what he uses, what Satan uses to get the Word out of you. All right, let's read it. In verse 16, These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately. Now, I want, I want that to just hang there a little bit. Immediately. See, immediately receive it with gladness. Now, this is a person that heard the word, and immediately he said, that's what I need. Praise God, that's it. I tell you, you don't have to hear this faith message but one time. If you was in the position I was when you heard it, you don't have to hear it but one time till you say, I want that immediately because it's life. It's something that'll do something for you. So that's what he said here. He said, they hear it immediately, and with gladness they receive it, have no root in themselves. Now, one of the other Gospels' account of this, it's either Matthew or Luke, states it this way, when they heard and didn't understand it. In other words, you see, when you don't have an understanding of what God's Word says, then Satan can steal it from you. So this is why we're dealing with these things and taking it slow. I realize we're repeating a lot of things. But you see, repeat's the way you learn. You don't get it just because you heard it once. So Jesus said, when you hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, have no root in themselves, endure for a time. See, they, they hang in there for a while. Now, you know what this is? This is a trier of the word. They said, man, that's the best thing I ever heard. I'm going to try that. <laughs> well, you're going to fail. See, Jesus says you're going to fail because he said uh, they have no root in themselves. They endure for a time, but afterwards when affliction and persecution. Now, what's he talking about? Affliction. You know what the word affliction there means? Now, that doesn't mean what most of you think that it means. Most of the time people think, well, now I'll tell you, affliction means sickness, disease, or all. No, it means the pressures of life. He said the pressures of life. When the pressures of life come on you. See, some of you have probably written me a letter and asked me, why is it that when I start out saying the things God says about me that it seems to turn the other way? And I mean, you know, when you start giving, you give an extra $20 in the offering or give an extra $20, tithes, pay your tithes, you know, every Sunday, and then it seems as though the pressures of life come against you. Well, that's design of Satan, and he said that's what he would do. Now, why did it happen that way? To get the Word out of you. No, not to perfect your faith. Now, you need to get a hold of this, because some of you have been thinking, well, now, I believe it's God doing that to perfect my faith. Well, now, it's strange that Jesus didn't know that. Jesus said Satan's doing it to get the Word out of you. Now, I believe Jesus knew what he's talking about, don't you? If anyone ever knew what they were talking about, I believe Jesus did. 
And he said, it's Satan bringing the pressures and the afflictions, the pressures of life toward you to get the Word out of you, keep you from acting on God's Word. Because when you begin to speak what God said about you, if you continually say it, see the principle of the God kind of faith, if you believe and doubt not in your heart, well, he's trying to get you to doubt before you get the thing in motion to where it'll work for you. Now, you need to know that Satan is out to destroy you. He's out to get the word out of you. Jesus said he uses affliction. He uses persecution. It arises for the word's sake, and immediately they are offended. Well, now, who's offended by that? The person that's the trier of the word. That's the one that's offended. No, not the doer, because you see, the doer, he'll do the Word of God, and if it gets worse, he just keeps on doing it. <laughs> I mean, uh, he's got his mind made up, his heart's established. He says, thank God the Word of God says it's true, it must be true, so I'm just going to continue to do it. And as long as he continues to do it, thank God Satan can't steal the Word from him. But the instant he says, well, now, wait a minute, it seems like it's not coming to pass. I wonder why it's taken so long. Well, now, when you begin to wonder, that's the seed of doubt. Just know that God's Word is true, and if you'll hold fast to it, it'll eventually come to pass and begin to speak and quote and say and just simply agree with what God says and just continually do what God's Word says. Don't back out of it. Don't let Satan steal it from you. And if you'll do that, Thank God you began to see over a period of weeks and months and years. Oh, yeah, it takes some things years to come to pass. Not everything. Now, you need to know that because some of you have been trying it for three weeks and you're about ready to give up and you think, well, now, I just wonder when it's going to... Well, now, that wonder there is going to turn into a seed of doubt if you don't get that out of there. Jesus said it would work. It will work. It will change your perspective on life. It'll change you probably as much as it'll change anything if you just keep on saying and doing the Word of God. But if you allow Satan to come steal the Word of God and become offended... Now, notice it said, The affliction and persecution ariseth for what? For the Word's sake. Now, it wasn't for your sake. It wasn't for the sake of someone else. It wasn't for God's sake. It wasn't to help your faith. It was to get the Word of God out of you. All right, now let's go on with it. And these are they which are sown among thorns. Now, you realize he's talking about four types of soil. There's four types of soil in this parable. There is the wayside soil, which is what we'd call in Arkansas the turn row. It's where the tractor turns around. It's packed and hard. Then there's the stony saw, where there's not much depth of earth. And then there is the thorny saw. And this thorny saw is designed to choke the Word of God. Some of the thorns that are in your heart must be gotten out of there before the Word of God can take root. Some of the ideas that, well, maybe this is God teaching me something. Now, that's one of the thorns that will absolutely choke the Word of God out of you. If you begin to believe that God is a partner to your failure, that God is causing these things to come upon you to perfect you or to help your faith in any manner, well, then you're more than likely going to fail in this area because you're going to back off of your faith and say, Who am I to fight against God? Well, you need to realize that the Bible said, Jesus said it's Satan doing it, and you need to resist the devil. James 4, 7 said, Submit yourself unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So begin to resist the devil. Now, see, as long as you think it's God, you're not going to resist the devil. You're going to allow it to come. And verse 19 said, And the cares of this world... Well, let's back up verse 18. These are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word... And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and lust of other things entering in choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirty, some sixty, some a hundredfold. Now notice there's only one type of saw, just simply one type of saw that produced 
the other didn't produce because one was not prepared, the other was stony and there was no depth to it, there was no depth of understanding, they didn't understand it, and the thorny soil had other things in there that choked the Word of God. Well, now I'll just tell you, some of your religious ideas will choke the Word of God. Now, I don't blame me for saying it. Jesus said it. Jesus said, you take your tradition and make the Word of God to none effect. Some of you have allowed your religious tradition to cause God's Word to become ineffective in your lives. Well, you need to know that God's Word is the final authority. I mean, you can just get rid of your religious tradition and get a hold of God's Word, and it'll cause some fruit to be produced in your life. All right, Jesus said these are the things that caused it, and he said the affliction, persecution, deceitfulness of riches, and lust of other things entering in choke the Word of God. Now, you realize the principle of the God kind of faith works, but when you begin to put it to work, I want to be the first to tell you, and I don't want you to get out there and say, well, now, Brother Caps told me that if I just start saying it, it'd all come to pass and I wouldn't have any problems. No, I didn't tell you that. I'm telling you now, and I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again, it's not an easy thing to do. But thank God it is the thing to do because Jesus said to do it. Jesus tells you how to work it, and Jesus tells you when you begin to work it that things are going to begin to look worse because Satan will come to steal the Word of God. Well, Satan comes to steal God's Word. Satan comes to take it out of you. But if you'll apply the principles, they'll work for you. Now, I want us to go back to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, because, you see, in Hebrews, the 11th chapter is one of the basics, the principle of Mark 11, 23, and 24, we find in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, tells you some more information that's needed in this area. Now, let's go back to it and read it again. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Now, I want you to look at it in this light. Faith is the substance. It's the raw material that things you hope for are made out of. Let's say it that way. We're going to say it so many ways, you're going to get it after a while. <laughs> Faith is the substance. It's the raw material that what you hope for is made from. Now, someone has suggested, well, now, you don't need hope, see. If you're just hoping and praying, you're wasting your time. Well, now, that's true. Hoping in prayer will not cause it to work. It takes faith to make prayer work. But hope does have a place. Now, don't try to use hope where faith needs to be, and don't try to use faith where hope needs to be, because they're two different forces. But you do need hope. And I want you to see this. Faith is the substance of things. All right? Now, what things is faith the substance of? It is a substance of things hoped for. All right? Now, if you didn't have any hope, then you wouldn't have anything for faith to give substance to, would you? So then you see, hope is a very real thing, and hope is needed. No, you can't just throw hope out and say, well, just get rid of hope because we don't need hope. Yes, we do need hope because hope is a goal setter. Now, here's where some of you are having problems. You haven't got your goal set right. And when you realize that hope is a goal setter, you been, began to set your goals on the right things. Now, where does hope come in? Faith is the substance or the raw material, a spiritual raw material. Now, you realize we're not talking about something physical. We're talking about something spiritual here, and it comes from God's Word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now, if you're trying to get it any other way, you're wasting your time. Because Paul has said, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Well, thank God if Paul said that faith comes by hearing the Word of God, then we're not going to get faith by praying for it. You need to know that. You don't get faith by praying for it. Quite often people say, Brother Caps, would you pray that I'd have more faith? No, I can't do that. Now, I'll pray that God will give you a desire for the Word of God. 
I'll pray that God will quicken your spirit to his word until you will desire to read and study the word of God and get in God's word day and night until faith comes. Now, I'll pray that way. It's unscriptural, really, you see, to pray that God would give you more faith. All right? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and the spiritual force is faith, and it's in God's word, and it comes and gets inside you when you hear God's word. As you hear God's word, continually hear God's word. Now, you see, that's not just hearing it once. You're not just going to read the Bible one time and just get a oodles and gobs of faith, as someone would say. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God. Continually hearing, in other words. It's not a one-time affair. It is a fellowshipping in the Word of God. All right? Faith is a spiritual force. It comes from that. But now hope is a goal-setter. Now, one of the illustrations that I like to use is a thermostat. And uh, we don't have a thermostat right here on this wall, but in your house there's a little box that sits on the wall, and it's called a thermostat. All right? Now, this thermostat is designed to be a goal setter. No, it's not the thing that heats your house. It can't do it. Now, I want to show you where some of you are missing it in this area. You're trying to use the goal setter. The carnal mind, the intellect of man, is a goal setter. It can't operate in the laws and the principles of God's Word. See, Paul said it this way in the 8th chapter of Romans. The carnal mind is enmity against God, and he says it's not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. The carnal mind is not subject to operating in the law of God. But your spirit man, the inner man, is. That's where faith comes. Faith comes into your spirit. When you hear the Word of God, faith comes into your spirit man. Now, faith operates out of the heart. It won't operate out of your head. Your head is a goal setter. Now, don't say, well, I just don't need my head. Just, you know, I'm not going to pay any attention to my head. Well, you better pay some attention to your head. Because if you don't, you're liable to walk right out in front of an 18-wheeler and say, well, I'm not going to believe what I see. Well, you better believe what you see in that area. You realize what I'm saying? Sometimes I think people, when they get turned on to the faith message, just throw away all good business practices and all common sense. Well, you don't need to do that. Now, you do need to realize that you don't go by the same rules that you do when you're operating in the world system. The world system operates this way. You believe what you see, what you feel, what you taste, and what you smell. You know, the five senses world rules and governs you. But when you're operating in the law of faith, you're going to have to believe some things you don't see. But when you're dealing with natural things, don't turn off your head and say, well, I see it, but I don't believe it. When you're talking about crossing the street, you better pay some attention to the truck coming. You better pay some attention to the train coming down the track. But you see, we're talking about a different area now. We're talking about operating in the realm of faith from the spirit man. Now, let's get back to the goal setter. The head, the carnal mind, is the goal setter. When you begin to renew your mind to the Word of God, you're setting goals in accordance with God's Word. Now, the carnal mind can't operate in the law of faith, but it can come into agreement and quit fighting the spirit man or the inner man, which is designed to produce the very thing that God's Word said. All right, the goal setter, the thermostat, a little round box about like that, and you all know how it works. You just turn it to the degree of temperature that you want in your home. You just walk over to the wall, and you set the goal setter. And that thermostat will send an impulse to the heart of that unit, and that unit sitting out on the outside of the building somewhere will work day and night. I mean, it'll work day and night until it brings that house to the temperature that you have set on the goal setter. Now, some of you need to realize something. Some of you have your goal setters set on problems. Some of you have your goal setters set on sickness and disease. Some of you have your goal setters set on, we'll never get out of this situation. Dear Lord, what are we going to do? Now, let me ask you something. How do you set the goal of that thermostat? Now, just think with me for a minute. You walk over to that thermostat, and you turn it to what you desire. You don't turn it to what you don't desire. 
Now, some of you are getting some light right here. Now, this is a very simple truth, but it's going to profoundly affect your life. Some of you have been turning your goal setter to the things you don't desire. You've been talking problems. You've been talking sickness. You've been talking disease. You've been talking all the bad news. Now, the Bible said don't do that. Paul said, With prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. No, he didn't say let your problems be made known unto God. He said, let your request. You're not requesting the problem, are you? Then you see where we've missed it in some areas? You see where Satan has deceived us? Get you to talk in the problem, pray in the problem, and all of this? Then you see you get your goal setter set. Hope is from the physical. Hope is from the soulless realm. Faith is from the inner man, from the spirit realm. But you do need hope, because if you throw hope out, you don't have anything to activate the spirit man. Now, that goal setter, that little thermostat on the wall of your house, you set it on 70 degrees when it's 20 degrees outside, and you've created a problem for the heart of that unit. But now that unit is designed to produce the heat or the cold, whichever is needed. It's designed to produce it. Now, you know that that little box can't do it. Don't you know that? I think you know that that little box sitting on your wall in your house cannot heat your house. Some of you have been trying to get this to work out of your head. You've been saying, well, I'm saying it. I've been saying it 12 times a day for 30 days, and I'll tell you, it's just not any better. It seems to be the same way. Well, you're trying to work it out of your head. Now, let me say this right here. The first stage of confession of God's Word is designed simply to cause faith to come. See, what did Paul say? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So you see, the first stage of your confession and saying and speaking is doing nothing more than causing faith to come. You're not affecting any great thing by what you're saying when you first begin to say it. It's just causing faith to come. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And I'll be the first to tell you that faith will come more quickly if you're hearing yourself quoting and speaking and saying what God said instead of listening to John Doe or somebody else, you know. I know no matter how great a preacher ministry is, you'll get more faith if you begin to hear yourself quoting and speaking and saying what God said because it'll feed your voice into your spirit. It's the spirit man where the faith operates from, that spiritual force of faith operates from the inner man, doesn't operate from the outer man. In fact, Paul says it this way, that the carnal mind is enmity against God. In another place, Paul said, the outward man perisheth, the inward man is renewed day by day. Well, thank God, day by day the inward man is fed on the Word of God. Now, your head may give you trouble. But you need to know that when you begin to set the goal setter, you set the goal setter by the words you speak. Now, you need to know this. The words you are speaking daily are setting goals for your life. Some of you are saying the very thing you don't desire, therefore you're setting the goal setter on the wrong thing. And you know what it does? It does the same thing as the heart of that unit out on the, your building that heats your house. When you turn that goal setter to 70 degrees, then that unit's going to kick on and begin to produce whatever's needed to bring that house to 70 degrees. When you go to talking sickness and disease and poverty, then you have sent an impulse to the heart, your spirit, and it will begin to maneuver you into a position to cause the very thing you're talking about, believing and speaking, to come to pass. Now, you see, we found in the Word of God where it says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Now, when you walk up to that gold set of that little thermostat and you turn that little box, 
You don't see hot air in the house. You don't see cold air in the house at that time. You simply set that goal and walk off and leave it, and knowing that it's going to come to pass that you're going to eventually have exactly what you set in that little box. And you see, you don't go off and pray about it and cry about it and bawl and squall and just pray to God that it would all work out. No, you see, you wouldn't do that because you have faith in the engineer that engineered that thing that he knew what he was doing. Well, I want you to know, folks, that the engineer that engineered the human spirit and the body of man and his carnal mind and all of that knew what he was doing, and that was number one, that was God. He's designed you to operate in the laws of the Spirit, in the power of the Word of God that will produce faith in your spirit, and your goal setter, your carnal mind is a goal setter. What you do to set that goal is speak words. Now, you see, when you understand that, this faith thing is not so strange to you because we realize that we've just talked about the principle of the God kind of faith that whosoever shall say, believe, and doubt not in his heart. So the saying of that is the thing that sets the goal. Now, you need to get a hold of this because some of you are setting the wrong kind of goals because you're saying the wrong things. You're saying what you don't want to come to pass. You're speaking things that are absolutely contrary to what you want to come to pass. But, you see, Satan will con you into doing that, get the goal set, and then it, your spirit, the human spirit, will work day and night. No, it doesn't just work sometimes and then it sleeps the rest of the time. While you're sleeping, your human spirit is working day and night to bring to pass the very things you're speaking. Now, let's go back to the little box again. You take a little box that's called a thermostat. There is no power in that thermostat, just as there is no power in your head, in your intellect, to produce the things you're saying. Now, here's why a lot of people say, well, I don't understand this faith and confession thing because that's just words that you're speaking. That's just an ego trip that you're on. That's just mind over matter. No, thank God, it's not mind over matter. It's the Word of God and faith and the principle of God kind of faith over all matter. And I'll tell you, it'll move heaven and earth, it'll move mountains, it'll move problems, it'll move everything in its way if you'll learn how to apply the Word of God through your own mouth to set the goal of your carnal intellect, of your mind, because that's where your hope comes from. You hope in things because you speak some things. The things you speak, you'll have hope for. Now, if you didn't have hope, then there would be nothing for faith to give substance to. You see, we found out in Hebrews 11.1 1, that faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things that are not seen. Well, you don't see those things, so you hope for them. Now, Paul said you have patience to hope for that which you don't see. You wouldn't hope for something you already see that you already have. When you begin to read in the Word of God and find out what God said, that produces hope. But you must have faith to cause it to come to pass. So you quote God's Word, you speak God's Word until faith comes. Faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing the Word of God. Didn't say it come by having heard. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God. Now, you see, I'm just going to keep saying that. I'm going to say it so many ways you're going to get it because you must learn to produce faith by the words of your mouth. God's Word will produce some faith by you hearing someone else speak it. But if you will speak it and quote and say what God has said and hear your voice say it, it will produce faith in you more quickly. How many of you have ever heard your voice on a tape recorder? The first time you heard your voice on a tape recorder, did it sound like you? Oh, no, you said, no, that couldn't be me. No, that's not me, but it was you. You know why it didn't sound like you? Because you had never heard yourself totally with the outer ear. 
See, you have two sets of ears. You have an outer ear, which is this ear you can see. Then you have an inner ear. The inner ear is, the doctors tell us, medical science tell us, made up of a bone structure inside the head. And when you speak, your voice is funneled into your hearing, mostly through the inner ear. Oh, you will hear some of it through the outer ear, but it's mostly through the inner ear. That's the reason that when you heard yourself totally see with the outer ear on a tape recorder for the first time, why, you said that couldn't be me because you'd never heard yourself that way. Well, now I want you to realize that God has designed the inner ear to feed your voice into your human spirit. Did you know that? Now, when you understand that, you find out some things about the faith principle of God's Word and why it begins to work when you begin to say some things. And it will affect your human spirit more profoundly than hearing what everybody else said. Now, you know this as well as I know it, that anyone, you included, you like your ideas more than you like anyone else's ideas. If you don't, there's something wrong with you. So then you see, when Jesus said that if you will speak and say, believe and doubt not in his heart, he'll have whatsoever he said, he was not just rattling off something, you know, to fill up the pages in the Bible. He's telling you a profound truth here. And we're talking about using it to set goals. Now, when you learn to set goals with the words of your mouth, I'll tell you it's going to change your life because some of you have been setting the wrong goals. You've been saying the wrong things.